I'm Jonathan Bollinger, and this is the Meet Your Tools module, which is part of NILC's Introduction to AI training course. So, in this module, we're going to look at ChatGPT, owned by OpenAI, and Copilot, developed by Microsoft, two mainstream AI tools, both of which are indeed very useful and have distinct advantages and benefits, as we will see. So let's kick off, first of all, with ChatGPT. Then, after I've been through the benefits, going to give you a bit of a tour of this particular tool. Then we're going to look at Copilot, its benefits, and we're going to have a tour of Copilot. But first of all, ChatGPT, so it has personalization. You can use features such as custom instructions, memory, and projects to really make it your own tool. So, for example, custom instructions allows you to brief ChatGPT about your role, about your team, even projects that you're working on, plus your industry sector, and even how you want ChatGPT to respond. So what sort of content you'll be creating and in what sort of way you want ChatGPT to respond. So tone and voice, etc. Memory allows you to provide ChatGPT with key facts and pieces of information so that it has better context for creating answers and content for you in future. But it'll also actually memorize information as you go along automatically. Projects allows you to work on specific pieces of work, perhaps on your own, perhaps with colleagues, and you can collaborate with colleagues on these projects. But what this does is allow ChatGBT to have a focus on a particular work area, but also allows you to stay organized. So loads of things ChatGPT is useful for, right from brainstorming, creating new ideas, turning those ideas into plans, providing or receiving training and learning, customer support, right way, way across your operations, and creating any sort of content. It's available 24 hours a day, and it's also scalable. For example, it can work with masses amount of data. Doesn't matter what language you use, most languages are supported, which makes it very, very good for translation. One expression you might hear when you are watching videos or listening to podcasts about AI is multimodal. So this means that the AI can receive instructions in a number of different formats and can output in a number of different formats as well. So provide its response in a number of different formats, such as text, audio, images. It can even use a smartphone's camera to analyze objects and the world around it as well as having the ability to understand files such as PDFs, Word documents and images that you upload. Very good for data analysis and providing insights on that data. And it turns out that in numerous studies, AI is generally more accurate than humans. So very good quality of output and work. And if any of you have used ChatGPT or similar tools, you'll know that AI tends to be super fast. It can think very, very quickly, process information, and provide that result or answer to your question really, really quickly. So it is faster than humans. So let's take a, a bit of a tour of ChatGPT. So just going to go onto my browser here. And we are at chatgbt.com. There are a number of different models of ChatGBT, which you can see here on the top left. The main one is 4.0. 4.5 is currently a preview option. And just to mention that this is the plus version of ChatGBT that I am using here. 
So when you want to write a prompt, you can go straight into this area, as it states here, ask anything, and you've got a number of different options along the bottom here. So if you want to add files, you can click on that. You can see that I can upload from my computer or directly access my OneDrive. I've set that up in settings, or I can even connect Google Drive as well there for direct access. If you want to explicitly search the internet, you can click on search, but you'll often find that if it needs to search the internet, it will. So unless you want to force an internet search, you don't actually have to select this button. If you want a really in-depth report, with research analysis and showing you the thought processes behind the work involved in preparation of the results, then deep research is what you need. Then under here, we've got a couple of useful tools. Create Image, which is great for designing images and photos, and Canvas, which is great for editing text and code. And here, this symbol is for voice mode, so you can communicate with ChatGPT using voice as well as typing in a text here. So you can really have a, a proper conversation, as we will see in one of the later modules. On the left here, if you want a record of your previous chats, you can scroll down and get those, all of which is searchable which is handy here you've got a number of what are called custom gpts or apps and here is the projects feature that i mentioned so for example work that i do on nilc's youtube videos is all carried out in this project here and you can upload files to provide extra information and context on the area of work you are focusing on and you want ChatGPT to focus on, as well as instructions about what that work involves to really help ChatGPT provide you with top quality results. Over on the right hand side here, because we're in a project, you can edit the project name and you can also click the profile picture that takes me into customized chat GPT. Now we mentioned before that you could customize your chat with custom instructions and this is the area that we're looking at here. So what do I want chat GPT to call me? What do I do? What traits do you want chat GPT to have and any other relevant information? So just one final thing, if we go back to a new chat, there is also a temporary chat here. So if you want to do something that ChatGPT shouldn't memorize, so if it's like completely off topic, for example, and nothing to do with your work, then you might want to use the temporary chat here. So it's just a, a little talk of uh, ChatGPT to start familiarizing you with this uh, amazing AI tool and we will come back with specific tasks and use cases in another module. So let's get into Copilot next and look at the benefits of Copilot. So Copilot is largely similar to ChatGPT, but there are some crucial differences. So it has the advantage of being built into apps that you are using every day, such as Word, Excel, Teams, PowerPoint, and Outlook. So you literally have a button that you can press and directly work within those apps using Copilot's assistance. Very, very handy. Second point is that unless you have an enterprise version of ChatGPT, then you can access all of your work data using Copilot. So this is amazing as a freelancer, so it can go out and search and retrieve things like documents and meetings and emails. So for example, it could list all my unread emails and that sort of thing. But what it can also do is access content and data and information from other areas of your organization if you are in a small business or a larger business. So that wouldn't apply for me as a freelancer, but 
imagine working in an organization where somebody has got some is working on a similar product they've got some similar uh they got some relevant information to your product your project and they happen to be working miles and miles away doesn't matter you can access that information subject of course to relevant permissions downside with copilot is that it has limited personalization so features that we were looking at before like custom instructions memory and projects not available currently on copilot but one would imagine that they would be coming out soon. Now, with regard to Copilot here, we're actually talking about, to give it its full name, Microsoft 365 Copilot, or to call it another name, the business version of Copilot. So let's have a, a little bit of a, a tour of Copilot. So here we're gonna look at the key features of Copilot, its advantages, and some of the similarities and differences with ChatGPT. So let's start off on the left-hand side. We've got a home icon that takes you to Microsoft 365 Home. We're on Copilot right now. Actions is interesting, a new feature for Copilot. Essentially, it combines prompts with tasks, so you can set up a recurring task, such as regularly summarize communications. Then we've got Create, which allows you to create things like PowerPoint files, Word documents, and so on, plus shortcuts to OneDrive, pages, and apps. But focusing on Copilot, we've got the prompt area down here, so very similar to ChatGPT. Now, when you want to reference files or meetings or people in Copilot, there is a handy shortcut. You can just put in the forward slash and all your recent people, files, meetings and emails will come up. You can also upload a file as you can see there. So all super useful. You can also click that to achieve the same effect or indeed click the paper clip icon. All of them do the same thing. Now, one difference with ChatGPT, although they have sort of like copied this a little bit, but one strength of Copilot is that it presents some good sample prompts. It gives you some ideas of what you can use Copilot for. And if you want more, you can click that button and that will take you to Microsoft's Copilot Studio where you've got even more prompts to view. So one key distinction between Copilot and ChatGPT are the work and web tabs. Now this is quite important. So if you're working on your organization's data and information, you do want to make sure that the work tab here is selected. Now, this doesn't mean it won't go out to the internet and do some research and analysis if necessary, but if you do want to force it to do that, you will need to select the web icon there. Now, selecting that means that it will not access your work and organization's data. So just to recap that, if you're on work, you may well get access to both your work and the internet. It really depends on the prompt that you use or the question that you ask. But in simple terms, if you want to access your work data, click on work. If you don't, click on web. Now this fires up a new chat to clear your existing chat history. This shows you the security of Microsoft's Copilot. This takes you into pages. And here we've just got a side panel that you can toggle on and off with that button. We've got some agents, as Microsoft call them, at the top here, including Visual Creator and a past history of your chats there. So that's pretty much it. Broadly speaking, the interface is similar to ChatGPT, but as you'll see there, there are some crucial differences. Hope you found that useful.